Today's scripture comes from Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten young women took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all of those young women got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for us and you. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other young women came, came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. In my earlier informative years, as a young child, this parable really scared me. I would go to bed and I would think, what if Jesus who they say is symbolically is the bridegroom, would show up and I was asleep. I would stay up all night thinking about what my pastor with vigor had preached on this particular piece of scripture. It's the second coming of Jesus. And if you are not prepared, Jesus would shut the door in my face and also say he does not know who I am. Frankly, I wasn't really quite sure what that meant, but I did know that it was something big and something meaningful and it was not a good thing. Be prepared, be prepared, be prepared was the focus of the sermon as the preacher would go up and down the aisle and he would look you right in your eyes. Be prepared! It was not pretty. I'm this little kid and I'm wondering to myself, what am I supposed to do? Every day walk around carrying a checklist and say, Mia, did you do it? Check it off. Be prepared. But there was also this underlying feeling in the message that there was the good bridesmaids versus the bad bridesmaids, which was a conflict for me, two groups in opposition. The good bridesmaids were smarter because they brought extra oil, and the bad bridesmaids were not smart because they didn't bring extra oil. Then there's the imagery around the bridegroom who slams the door on the not so smart bridesmaids as punishment because they weren't smart enough to think ahead. So what I heard is that there are winners and there are losers in this parable. Frankly, I think the parable, honestly, you all, it is a mess, and I'm not quite sure why Matthew decided to even write on this. And if, Matthew, really this incident happened, I'm sorry, you all, he was way off far, and he was trying to do lip reading, because I don't get it around slamming that door. It's filled with conflict, pinning two groups of people against each other. But nevertheless, it is the gospel selection for this week. So can we make it a bit more user friendly? We all know that Matthew's gospel was written during the Jesus movement of the first century. There was a conflict with the local religious leaders who considered the Christian peers to be deviants. There is much discussion around who belongs and who didn't, who was in with God and who wasn't. So how can we approach this parable to gather another consideration about its meaning around being prepared and how can we apply it in our lives today. 
As I discerned this week's parable, I found myself thinking about the war between Russia and Ukraine and Israel and Palestine. This thing about who is right and who is wrong, who's in the in group with God and who is not. I found myself really thinking in depth about the danger of division. In the parable, there are 10 versions. Half of them are wise and the others, we are told, are foolish. It's easy to focus on the differences and the divisions as is often in the case of conflict between nations. The lesson here is not to get caught up in labeling one side as good and the other as bad. In the context of Israel and the Palestinians and Ukraine and Russia, it's important to recognize that there are a range of perspectives and experience exists within these communities. Understanding the complexity and avoiding the simplification of the conflict is essential. If the primary message of the parable is about being prepared in the context of Israel and Palestine and Ukraine and Russia's conflict, being prepared meant war. But what if being prepared really was meant to be seen as readiness? A part of being prepared is learning from your mistakes. Is there a way that we could see readiness as being prepared for opportunities for peace? Dialogue and understanding. Both sides need to remain open to the possibility of peaceful coexistence and reconciliation even in the face of long-standing disagreements. Even though they all believe that their responses and their actions make them good, therefore the other one is bad. Might the parable also teach us about the concept of perseverance? And when I say that, I'm speaking on the notion of staying around and figuring it out can be applied to conflicts at hand. Conflicts like the ones in the Middle East and Eastern Europe can be lingering and challenging. The lesson is not to give up, but to persevere in seeking solutions and working towards understanding and peace. And figuring it out, how can we live together? This requires patience and a long-term commitment. This is where we can have learning and growth. Just as the foolish versions had an opportunity to learn and grow by acquiring more oil, so too can nations and individuals involved in conflict learn from their experiences and adapt their approaches. Recognizing the need for personal and collective growth is essential when there is conflict. I'd like to think that the parable teaches us and emphasizes the importance of not getting caught up in the labels. Rather, the parable can teach us about being prepared and vigilant for opportunities to find growth and find solutions. What would the world look like if we considered openness and mindfulness and perseverance and readiness as a form of resolution? as a way to adapt to complex and enduring conflict. What would the world look like if we considered how these principles could help to encourage a more constructive and hopeful approach to addressing conflicts in our times? So much stress is around the wars that are happening in our world and the fears that we carry about what is happening in our worlds. Let's be honest, we sometimes don't want to talk about it. One of the greatest conversations that's happening right now is, will Trump win? No matter what president wins, we have to figure it out. Let us not continue to look at the things that will divide us but use that energy for the things that would bring us together. Amen. <laughs>